Hello and welcome to today's lesson looking at the simple pendulum. Now today's lesson is going to form part of the course of periodic motion which is found in the AQA A-level physics topic okay, in paper 1 okay, and such like that for further mechanics. So in today's lesson we're going to try and investigate the properties of simple harmonic motion. So we're going to understand how to take accurate experimental measurements of a simple harmonic oscillator deduce the experimental technique needed to make measurements in a simple harmonic system and then calculate the gravitational field strength from a pendulum system which forms into the following part of the specification so we're going to be looking at a simple pendulum in today's lesson which links into the simple harmonic system which is part of the periodic motion and further mechanics aspect of the AQA A-level physics which is found on paper 1 of the A-level physics but not on the AS physics course so in our previous lesson, we considered the mathematics behind the simple harmonic motion of a system of a mass spring system. However, in today's lesson, we're going to look at another example of simple harmonic motion with another simple harmonic oscillator, which is called the simple pendulum. So we're going to look at a system where a mass is attached to a light string and undergoes simple harmonic motion. Now, to understand the mathematics of the simple pendulum, we're going to consider a pendulum bulb of mass m on a light string of length l at an angle of theta to the vertical. Now, you don't have to remember this derivation for a simple pendulum, but it's an interesting derivation to look at and understand. So, we consider this a simple pendulum. So, it's a, ma it's a mass on a string of no mass, which we call a light string, and it's, it's considered to have a small displacement and equilibrium in the horizontal plane of motion. Now, because it's not at its equilibrium position and it's a simple harmonic oscillator, there will be a resultant restoring force acting towards the equilibrium position on the pendulum. Now, this is literally from the definition of simple harmonic motion. There's always a restoring force acting towards the equilibrium position. So, the, res the resultant restoring force act in the horizontal plane of motion because that's the direction the pendulum's accelerating in the horizontal. So, the only force acting in the horizontal uh, for this pendulum is the horizontal component of the weight. So, that must be the resultant restoring force of the pendulum. So, we now know that our resultant restoring force must be the horizontal component of the weight because that's the only horizontal force acting upon your pendulum. Now, because the resultant restoring force act in the horizontal plane of motion, that the only force acting that is the weight, we can therefore say it's the restoring force. So if we, res if we now resolve our weight into the horizontal component, we can say it's mg, which is the equation for weight, sine theta. So we've now incorporated our horizontal component. Now remember, this force must also be a negative because it's acting in the opposite direction to motion. So we can say that the restoring force is equal to minus mg sine theta. Now, we also know that acceleration is equal to F over M, which comes from Newton's second law of motion, which is what the simple harmonic oscillator will obey. So we can now say that if F equals minus mg sine theta and A equals F over M, so A will be equal to minus mg sine theta over M, so therefore A is equal to minus g sine theta. So as a result, we now know that F, the resultant force, Ft, is equal to minus mg sine theta, and the acceleration is minus g sine theta. However, we can also use an idea in mathematics, which we call the small angle approximation. Now, in the small angle approximation, which works from about 10 degrees or less, that sine theta can be approximated to equal theta. So you don't have to use the sine function to work out your answer, but that can only work if your angle is in radians, not degrees. So therefore, we can simplify acceleration to be minus g theta, because sine theta is just approximated to equal theta. So as a result, we have used this from the small angle approximation which we encountered earlier, which allows us to consider the displacement from equilibrium in a straight line. So as a result, this shows that acceleration is proportional to the negative displacement. Okay, so this then indicates to us that there must be simple harmonic motion going on. So because we know that A is directly proportional to minus displacement, which is the 
condition of simple harmonic motion but to have this take place we've got to assume that the angle that is displaced is by 10 degrees or less so in investigations you can only displace a pendulum 10, 10 degrees from the equilibrium position and gain accurate results if you displace your pendulum more than 10 degrees it can't follow the small angle approximation so this equation doesn't hold true so we, we can actually use these ideas to work out the time period for an oscillation for a simple harmonic pendulum so if we know that theta is small we know that sine theta is equal to x divided by L because we're assuming that it's a right angle triangle because it's small changes in the displacement X we can consider the displacement path to be a straight line and not a curve so we can use our rules of trigonometry Sokotoa to work out a, a um, equation for the angle sine theta now as we know previously a is equal to equal to minus g sine theta and we know that this is because there must be a restoring force and restoring acceleration towards the equilibrium position of the pendulum so we can now say that a is equal to minus g x over l why is that because sine theta is equal to x over l so then what we can say is we know that a is equal to minus omega squared x so that minus omega squared x is equal to minus g x over l as shown here. So as a result, the x term is common, so it can be cancelled out. We know omega is equal to the square root of g over l, because we, we can derive it through, and we know that omega is equal to 2 pi over t, and f is equal to 1 over t. So as a result, we know that uh, t is going to be equal to 2 pi times by the square root of L over G, which is the equation for the time period of a pendulum. Now, you don't need to memorize this equation because it is given to you in your data book for your examination. So just remember that t is equal to 2 pi times by the square root of L over G. What's L? L is the length of the string of the pendulum, and G is the acceleration due to gravity. Now, if theta is less than 20 degrees, this equation is accurate to 1%. Now, generally, like mentioned before, the assumption we have in this equation is that the pendulum undergoes simple harmonic motion and can only have this equation be used when the displacement from equilibrium is less than 10 degrees. Now, note, by the way, that nothing affects oscillation time okay, apart from the length of the string and the gravitational field strength. So the mass of the pendulum, the amplitude of the oscillation from equilibrium does not affect the time period of the pendulum because they're not found in the equation. So our equation for the time period of a pendulum is given by the following. T equals 2 pi times by the square root of L over G, where T is the time period for one oscillation of a pendulum in seconds. L is the length of the pendulum in meters. G is the gravitational field strength of the pendulum is in, or the acceleration due to gravity in newtons per meter. 2 pi is a constant. Now, like we said before, this equation is given to you in your examination book, but you've got to remember what each term represents, the units of each term, and the assumptions of the equation. So what are our assumptions? Well, our assumptions are that, firstly, the amplitude of oscillation is less than 20 degrees. Okay, but we tend to say less than 10 degrees, that the length of the pendulum is from the fixed position to the centre of the mass of the pendulum bob, and there's no dampening forces acting on the pendulum. Now, we term pendulums with these assumptions as simple pendulums. So compl complex pendulums do not have these assumptions associated with them. Now, any factor not in this equation cannot affect the time period of oscillation for a simple pendulum. So you can change the length of a pendulum in an investigation, and you can measure the time period of one oscillation of a pendulum, and you can use this to work out the gravitational field strength or the acceleration due to gravity, g, the pendulum is in. So like mentioned before, to work out the gravitational field strength, the pendulum is in, you change the length of the pendulum and you measure the time period of one oscillation. You then can plot these results on a graph, so you do time period squared against the length. So for a simple pendulum, we know t equals 2 pi times by the square root of L over G. So t squared is equal to 4 pi squared uh, times by L over G. Now as this is a straight line of best fit, y equals mx plus c. 
So we know that from this particular equation that y is t squared, x is going to be l. So the gradient m is 4 pi squared over g. So the gradient of the line of best fit of this graph is 4 pi squared over g. So therefore the strength of gravity or the gravitational field strength will be 4 pi squared divided by the gradient of this line of best fit. Now, if we plot a time period of one oscillation squared against the amplitude of oscillation, nothing would happen because the amplitude just does not affect the time period of oscillation as, it's not, as this is not found in the equation. And like we said before, we can also plot the time period of one oscillation against the mass of the simple pendulum and you will get this straight line because the mass of the pendulum does not affect the time period of oscillation as it's not found in the time period equation. Now this means one of the key investigations used to find out the gravitational field strength has been to measure the oscillation time period of a simple pendulum. Now, one of the first accurate measures of the Earth's gravitational field strength was Qatar's pendulum in 1818. And again, the measurements of a pendulum at time periods first showed the Earth was not a perfect sphere with a uniform gravitational field, because in 1671, a scientist called Richer worked out the length of a pendulum with a swing of one second was 2.6 millimeters shorter in French Guyana, which is near the equator, compared to that in Paris. This then allowed Isaac Newton to work out that this was due to the fact that the Earth was not in fact a perfect sphere, but was slightly ablate and was thicker at the equator because of the Earth's rotational motion. Now in the future, we could actually use the pendulum oscillation time period measurements to work out the gravitational field strength on newly colonized planets. So if we went on to an alien world, we could work out the gravitational field strength of that alien world very accurately by using a time period, by measuring the time period of a simple pendulum. Now the Foucault pendulum in Paris was to produce to derive the gravitational field strength on Earth, and it also showed how the Earth was rotating. And measurements of the pendulum time period are currently used on Earth to determine the geology of different regions. So for example, the Geological Survey of India carried out in the late 19th century was carried out by looking at the measurements of pendulum time periods. So areas with a shorter part, uh, time period where there must have been denser rock material than the surrounding areas. So like we mentioned before, a simple recording of the time period of a pendulum along with its string length would allow prospective colonists on a new alien world to determine the gravitational field of any astronomical body. So we can actually experiment to calculate the gravitational field strength of anywhere in the world, for example Newcastle, from a simple pendulum system and we can compare it to its expected value. So what do you need? You need a light string, you need a pendulum bob, one meter ruler, a fiducial marker, counterweights, stopwatch, clamp, boss and clamp stand. So what would you do? You attach a piece of string to a pendulum bob, tie a knot at the end to secure the bob, measure a length of light string and cut this off, measure different string lengths on the string and mark, secure your pendulum onto a clamp and clamp stand using cork clamps, ensure the length of the string uh, your first, is your first measured value, push the pendulum freely to oscillate and time the oscillations you've chosen, ensure the pendulum is not displaced by more than 10 degrees, work out the time period for one oscillation, Repeat this experiment for different values of string length that you've chosen. So this is what you would need in this investigation. You would need a ruler, a stopwatch, core cards, and pendulum bobs. Now remember the mass of the pendulum bob is irrelevant as it's not found in the time period equation. You need counterweights, light string, clamp stands, clamps, and bosses. So you would need to retrieve a bob okay, for your investigation. Now again, any object could be used as a pendulum, okay, so it's just a mass undergoing oscillating motion with a light string. Now again, we need to assume the string is light, it has no mass. What you would then do is place a string through the bob and place a knot in the string, ensure the bob is fastened tightly to ensure that it doesn't come loose and hurt someone, which is a consideration for a risk assessment. Then you will place a meter ruler at the end of the knot of the bob. Now for complete accuracy, measurements should be taken from the center of mass of the bob, not the edge of the bob. This practice reduces the absolute uncertainty in the result and ensures you can identify where your center of mass for your bob is. Now, 
It is in mechanics we assume the force of an object is exerted from an object's centre of mass, so it simplifies the mathematics involved. So we're assuming that this restoring force is acting from the centre of mass of this bob. Now the centre of mass of this bob will be the centre of the bob because our bob we use in this experiment is of a uniform shape. So using a marker pen, mark a point on a string you wish to use for your string length. Make sure you make the marker on the string and the string is pulled tight and straight to ensure there's no parallax error. So you would then start the measurements from the centre of mass of the bob, ensure your string is taut and you place the marker at the intervals with the marker pen. Now you should choose your own values for string length but you should have a logical rationale for this. Now the best intervals will produce a different time period value for each measurement. You should choose your own range of string length values. Again you've got to get a large enough range to gain a spread of results but if you have values too small you'll have a large percentage uncertainty and values too large will be dangerous to carry out in an experimental lab. So you'll then retrieve a set of core calves. This is used to secure the light string in place. This ensures your pendulum will only oscillate in one plane only, the horizontal plane of motion, because our equation is assuming that we're only considering the horizontal forces acting on the object. This will actually be a source of friction, a dampening force of the investigation, so it will actually mean you'll not get the experiment, you'll not get the theoretical value experimentally. So we're making sure our pendulum will only oscillate in one plane only by carrying out that procedure. So once you've, once you've then secured it, then you've got your pendulum bob as such. Then you'll attach, your clamps, you'll attach the clamps down with the core calf and ensure the marks at the bottom as such. And as a result, it will be set up as the following picture demonstrates. So you displace the pendulum by less than 10 degrees and ensure the pendulum oscillates. You may wish to use a protractor to measure this out. If the displacement is more than 20 degrees, then the equation used to calculate G is no longer accurate. So you may wish to use one of these particular protractors to find a displacement of around about 10 degrees, as such like that. Now, as long as the angular displacement is less than 20 degrees, this value doesn't have to stay consistent as it's not a value in the equation, it's just something we're using for an assumption. So if we're assuming a small angular approximation, it just has to be less than 20 degrees, round about 10 degrees. So you record the oscillations and calculate the time period, repeat this for different lengths. Now you may wish to use a fiducial marker to measure an oscillation. You stand parallel with the pendulum to avoid parallax error. So you might wish to use a pin as an example of a fiducial marker, attach the fiducial marker to the desk with blue tack. Now again the best place for a fiducial marker is where the bob is moving at its fastest because it has its smooth transit because it's easy to see its movement which happens at the centre of the oscillation is such like that. Now you will retrieve a stopwatch, measure the time taken for the system oscillation. Now you choose the number of oscillations you wish to measure in one on one measurement and you've got to have a logical rationale for this. Think about it though, the, the more oscillations you take a measurement for, the lower your percentage uncertainty will be. Now you would alter the length of the pendulum by moving it up the, the call cars and then as a result you calculate the different time periods for those different lengths. Now again you choose your own value for your string length but we'll talk about the best intervals and the best ranges. Now again ensure the pendulum swings in one plane of motion, the horizontal and it doesn't hit other pieces of equipment or yourself. Now you should also wear safety glasses when carrying out this practical to ensure that the mask if it does come loose doesn't hit you in the eye if it does. Now again Think about how many repeats you wish to take of each, each value in this particular investigation. Ensure there's a counterbalance on the clamp stand to ensure the system is stable. There's no resultant moment which causes your clamp stand to topple over the desk. So if it's set up correctly, the pendulum should oscillate as follows. As you can see. So. Now. So what have we learned in today's lesson? That th this is the study of a simple pendulum with a time period of 2 pi times by the square root of L over G. There's a variation of kinetic energy, potential energy and total energy with displacement of time 
You understand the dampening on oscillations, and you should recognize the use of the small angle approximation in the derivation of the time period of four examples of approximate a simple harmonic motion. And we know how to investigate simple harmonic motion using a simple pendulum. So we've learned in today's lesson, we understand how to take accurate experimental measurements of a simple harmonic oscillator, deduce the experimental technique you needed to make measurements of a simple harmonic system, and we calculate the gravitational field strength from the pendulum system. Hope you've enjoyed today's lesson on the simple pendulum, and have a lovely day.